Right, this is Mr. Palmer here. I've uh, got a video again for you today. Uh, before you proceed with this video, you need to make sure you go over your notes and arrays. Make sure you also go over your notes and file organization. So make sure you so you are quite clear on the difference between serial and sequential files. Right, so waiting for you to go over your notes. I should have a bit of a snooze. I only had a few hours sleep last night. So here we go. Stack this one is about static data structures and lists. So the big questions for this little video, what are the major limitations of a static data structure? And then how do you overcome that? Uh, one of the techniques here is using a list. So you should be able to uh, think about, or you should know how to add and remove data from a list and how to traverse the nodes in a list. And you need to go away at the end of this and be able to write algorithms that can do those tasks, perform those tasks, right? So let's just recap quickly over what a data structure is. If I'm storing data about different, um, TV shows, for example. So I might have uh, TV show one, TV shows two, TV shows three, TV shows XXXX, whatever it is, keep on going. Imagine I'm storing all the TV shows that are currently on uh, on in the daytime today. Yeah, there's thousands of them by the end of the 24 hours. My, it would be very difficult for me to write my program uh, to you know manipulate that data because it'd be very difficult for me to keep track of what's going on. And that's why we use a data structure. So here's an example of an array used to store the same thing i've got uh it's called tv shows single identifier to refer to my array instead of having maybe a thousand different uh different variable names in there and then i can access each in each individual element using the index so tv shows zero will pull up the first element in the array tv shows four obviously pulls up the fifth element in the array so on and so forth so that's the definition you should remember from last year data structure is holding a multi uh, holding multiple related values of the same data type under a single identifier one name multiple elements of the same type yeah the caveat is a record structure but then you should be thinking you know you go back to your notes and you need to refresh in your mind actually how we can create record structures there so using an array just popping back over this again right here i have declared an array of size five i've got my five elements in my array i want to store something Okay, I've, uh, I've got, so just to recap again, the red bit there is the identifier and the blue bit refers to the, ele the index of the element. Okay, and I've got a new TV show I want to store, Samurai Jack, classic cartoon for me, pops up and I want to store it in my array. Unfortunately, I don't have space, right? So this is a big limitation of what we call static data structures. The, an array is static in the sense that it cannot change its size, right? If you are learning Visual Basic, you might say, yeah, I can use a read statement or whatever it is, but you know, that is actually, that is changing the array, okay? Um, so what we have here is uh, two problems, right? When you design your program, you need, you might think, okay, I'm gonna store, I might the maximum I might store is like a hundred items. So you create a larger array, okay? But you may also still run out of space. You, you don't know what the user is going to do. You can predict, but you can't guarantee, all right? At the same time, also, if you declare that huge array of 100 elements, but you're only storing six items in there, then you're wasting a lot of memory. You've got 94 unused elements. That's that, and you know, you're wasting a great deal of memory space. If all applications were doing the same thing, then your RAM would fill up quite quickly. So before we move on, all right, I'm just gonna look at the actual array itself in memory. Right, so in an array, sorry, the RAM, when we when we refer to and use the RAM, we are think we we basically the, the the RAM is accessed through an, a single a one dimensional array of addresses. Okay, each each address in there corresponds to some kind of physical location or, on the RAM. Okay, so that would look that array would look something a bit more like this. You have your single dimensional or single dimensional array of addresses and then the red bits represent or the pink bits represent memory addresses that are full up okay and our array tv shows whatever was declared and it has been assigned so it's been uh, put into addresses four to eight it occupies that space in the memory so a one dimensional representation of the ram uh, the addresses point to those locations on the in the ram okay now, the we, you and you we're going to come back to that representation in a moment. Okay, so 
the data structure we're talking about today, primarily, you're learning about the new data structure you're learning about is a list. Okay, a list looks something like this. Each um, node stores some data. So my first node is A. So the data, so this, the data is being stored in there is A, and then that has a pointer which points at the next second node. That points at the third node, the fourth node, the fifth node, and that finally points at the the end of the list. Okay. So the beginning is called the head the head node, the head of the list, and at the end of it, you have the terminator, all right? The huge advantage of list are that the data is not stored contiguously in memory, right? That means that they're not physically located next to each other. So if you think about the array that you just saw, right, that array is located in one clump of the RAM. Your list is not stored the same way. So that means your list looks a bit like this. My TV shows list has been declared. The head of my list is in address three. So my one dimensional representation of the RAM is there in the center of the screen. And number address number three points out my first, <coughs> excuse me, node in the list. <coughs> Sorry. So, um, my first node is Ghost in the Shell. That has a pointer which points at address 2. In address 2, I've got that uh, TV show which points at address 5, which points at address 8, which points at address 6. That's the tail of my list. And that has an X. That's the Terminator. So you can see we're a bit more flexible now about how we're using the memory. And as we need to put data in, we can just basically shift stuff around. So that, you can see, I now want us to Samurai Jack. And so we pop that somewhere into some free memory. We update the pointer of where the terminator was. So that now points at the new node we've just added. And we stick a terminator in at the in the pointer for our new tail. If you think about your uh, file organization methods, what method of file organizations does this uh, kind of represent here? Okay. The data is being stored in the order in which it arrives. Therefore, it is a serial file. This <coughs> is a bit more of a representation of how you could use a list to store a, a sequential file. <coughs> so uh, my first TV show it actually is Akira. So the head of list points at six. Six then points at the next one and then so on and so forth down until I get to alphabetically my uh, final node in the list. Again, if a new one arrives in, I can see it needs to now be, go somewhere before the A team. So we put it into memory. We update the previous pointer to point out our new node. And then our, my new node points out the one that follows it. So it actually is quite easy to uh, insert data into the middle of a sequential file using uh, a linked list. So if we think about the RAM, we're going to go back to the RAM here, okay? And we have uh, my TV shows stored in my uh, my list, okay? The red bit down at the bottom represents something else stored in the RAM, okay? So I've got some empty addresses with nothing in it. And so I can have another list which basically points at my free space. So when I need to add an item into the linked list, the my my program will the is going to look at the that pointer for the free space. It will move my new data into that point, and it will need to update the free space head to point at the note location that that was the next location, the next node that 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 free space was pointing to. And that's how we can keep adding data into the into the list. So if we think about using lists and we compare them to the we're talking about a dynamic data structure, it can grow while we're using it. So memory is allocated as it's needed during runtime. So you don't have that problem where you're allocating too much RAM uh, and you're not using it, or you don't have enough and you might go over and then you don't have enough space to store the data that you need. However, the pointers can use more memory than the data itself. If you're using, for example, a byte to store like a small integer from 0 to 255, but you're using 64-bit addressing, then your pointers are using more memory than the data itself. So the, the pointers are larger 
than the, the data, which is a bit of a waste of resources. Uh, another advantage is obviously it's expanding in real time without a memory overhead. So that read in statement in Visual Basic, what's happening is that you are is declaring a new array, it's copying all the data over into the new array, it's adding your new elements that you want to put in at the bottom, and then it's deleting the previous array and renaming and, and pointing the address of the new one that's been created. Okay. Now, the uh, the problem is that at that point when you're doing all that copying, you're holding two. Uh, arrays in memory at the same time so the, there's that in memory overhead if you think about um, the deletion of uh, data from serial files and whatnot that you learned about last year uh, you should think there was a similar process going on all right um, insertion and deletion uh, operate you know not when you're inserting and deleting nodes um, in a linked list is actually quite easy to do however all right the flip side of that is because they're not sto stored uh, contiguously yeah, the time required to, to access an individual node within a list increases because you have to start at the beginning of the list and then you need to read through the whole list to find uh, um, the data that you're looking for. All right. And then uh, we it's fine, we'll find it much easier to implement stacks and queues using a linked list. So the next video that's coming along is going to actually teach uh, talk about queues and then the one after that. So we're going to do in trees and then we're doing stacks at the end. So um, <clears throat> this is a bit more complicated to look at now, but lots of uh, times you will implement a linked list within an array. Okay, so I've declared an array called Array TV Shows, and uh, the head of my uh, TV shows, uh, sorry, my memory address one. I'm very sleepy. I do apologize. I'm going to start again on this one. Okay, so the my array TV shows it begins in address location one. All right, that's the first thing you can see up here. Let's get a pen up. All right, this is the first thing that you can see up here is that my array starts in address number one up here at the top. Okay, now the head of my list actually starts in element two, and I can use the pointer to work my way up and down. Uh, the the array because I've uh... that's an error isn't it no it's not here we go goes in the shell starts over here and that points at Dragon Ball Z and so on and so forth and I can traverse my my array using the uh, index of the um, of the first element of that sort of that element in the array okay and I'm managing my uh, free space queue by pointing it at one of the free space no, uh, uh, elements, uh, an element that's empty, and then as I need to, I can store something into that element over here, and then that will then uh, be put into this, uh, to my free space head, and that will be updated with the number nine. So I know that when I need to store my next element, it will go into that position in the array, and then I will continue by uh, changing, moving that. A pointer into my free space head again all right so your next steps basically are to go away and it's worth going through the video and watching those points again where I'm talking about how to add nodes into a list and how to delete nodes and you should be able to write algorithms that can determine how to carry out that process also something to think about a question for you is what happens if the list is serial and I want to add aardvark to my list it needs to go to where well, if it's a serial file how is aardvark added Whereas if you have a sequential file, how is aardvark added? And you should be able to put that into the context of your uh, adding nodes to a list algorithm and think about how do you, you know, you've got your sequential addition and you should have a serial addition as well. So the big questions, you should be able to think about what are the major limitations of a static data structure. You're talking there about uh, the over allocation of memory, so wasting resources or running out of space anyway because you, you can't predict what the user will do. you can't guarantee what the user will do you're trying to predict but who knows okay and then you should be able to write your algorithm so you can clearly explain how to add and remove data from serial and sequential files uh, using linked lists and how to traverse a linked list how do you get through that linked list to find your data thank you very much and watch out for the next video coming pretty soon on queues